The completion was uh, the completed <coughs> in March 2011. So oh. it's like the fourth um, we were going in. And so they've, uh, the modifications they made at the beginning of this current you know, feeding season have been good ones. And you see more of the same that we wanted to see. But you're using open backup to Correct. get them to save the money. Well, I think that we still, we, yes, indeed. It's very much sort of cheaper than um, no two heating fuel. Although well, this year has been a cheap oil year. Um, and I think that you know we're looking at the number of tech gas and that has some opportunities for savings. We're right there in Elm Street, certainly. Um, and continued modification of the, the internal temperature. I think working with the contractor to just constantly tweak as bodies go in and out of different parts of the building. Um, there's always someone who's uncomfortable, alas. Uh, we don't have 100% satisfaction with the internal climate of the spaces. But I don't think any building actually offers 100%. Right. right. City Hall. No, I'm sorry. There's some people who are cold and some people are yeah, slow. But the heat pump is heating and cooling. Correct. Right. And having air conditioning has been just a, a huge blessing in the community. Yeah. Um, so we have seen it, you know, especially last summer, you know, during those hot, hot days. It was great to see, you know, families with newborn babies come in and be able to get relief from their own, you know, hot, hot houses and be able to enjoy the comfort of these air conditioned public spaces. People can come and they can stay as long as they want, you know, as long as they're following the rules, there's, you know, there's no limitation on how they go you know, and they can enjoy those spaces. It's been great. We are grateful for air conditioning. Sure. Weird. We'll see your expenses are flat, by the way. Where's the increase? The library um, at the the increase has really been in uh, staff. So what we've been offered, what we have done this current fiscal year is just be maintaining a, a level funding. Um, but what we have done over the past in this current fiscal year is to the board of trustees has really changed um, the direction of the library in terms of looking at its development operations. In order to continue to maintain uh, our business and career center staffing, I want to offer congratulations to Tammy Rabidou, our since the person like Baron, who was just honored by the chamber um, for their outstanding professional of the year award. Um, hope that demonstrates you know, just why the board of the team was so committed to maintaining that position and being able to continue to offer community services. So we didn't want to, um, the funding for that position originally had been through PDCAP, through the stimulus funds, through um, the ARA. Um, in addition, the library had built in as part of our capital campaign funding for the program. So we would have you know, some years of like, Programming, so we wouldn't have to speak the building, we would have actually programs that are meaningful and useful for people. Um, and so, in order to maintain those services, we uh, are uh, really ramping up our development efforts. The library has not been really aggressive over you know, the past you know, decades, of really you know, cultivating a kind of a, a development and fundraising within the organization. And so, we are going to do that now, and we will continue to offer you know, all these great programs and services that we are now. Um, we have opportunities long term to, um, through, um, through changes in uh, the virtual federal funding and opportunities for libraries looking at business and workforce development. Libraries are now eligible um, entities for funding. So we are looking long term, uh, uh, short term, long term. So. We are currently in the process of, of looking at um, funding and how to you know, garner some of those funds for our own community. So that's where that comes from. So we just have decreased this year. Um, we wanted to. Um, we don't want to uh, under you know under sell or understate the, you know, the needs of the library. We can find body, but we're certainly aware of the constraints that the city has in terms of you know, tax revenue. And so the board can run up and these services, we have been committed to raising those prices of those properties of the city committee to be So we're going to be taxed with funds as well. Sarah, yes. uh, book sales are down considerably all over the country. Are you finding your use of books reduced? Fewer clients taking books out? Or? No, I'm pleased. I'm always pleased to report that more people are checking out books than they were um, 10 years ago. So I am um, Mark. This is my 10th year here in Waterville. Um, and it's always nice to kind of look at the numbers. And yes, people are reading more than they used to read. Are you reading any uh, audio books in the library? Yeah, we sure do. We have a, a variety of different you know, sort of different formats, including downloadable audio books. Um, e books have really taken a, a, a great leap in popularity this year. Um, 
wildly increase or you know, in 2013. Um, so people are liking their stories in, in different ways, and that's been great. And so people are reading more than they used to. Well, Which I know, but a lot of people are reading them. Kindles, for instance. You yep. Know, online yeah. stuff. Yep. And that's, that's really been um, great. We've committed to um, maintaining that service, um, the downloadable audio books and downloadable e-books. And um, that's taken a while to really you know, catch on, but I was surprised doing the statistics for the past year just how much it has increased in usage. So people don't, you know, because that always convenient to even get to the library in those 53 hours and have a variety of options for people's interest Tell us about the computer replacement. Oh, that's been great, too. Um, we have recently, through, um, through a great sort of fortune, have been the recipient of, of 67 new, uh, well, new to us, um, gem use computers and other technology through Holy College. They cycle out their technology much more quickly than we do. And so we were able to get um, all new computers for our public, um, our staff, including great thanks to Josh Grant, the head of the IT department, and we and CJ really um, save the day by getting all those uh, new to us computers ready for the public. So it's been great. Many of the stations have touch screens, which is really uh, touch screen monitors, which is awesome for people with mobility issues or just accessibility. It's been great. Yeah. So we're really we feel really lucky and we're on the uh, they have told us that we can get on their cycle regularly. So we look forward to being able to not uh, have to shell out fifteen thousand dollars on brand new technology or you know, just what it cost to replace it. They donated or? Yeah. Ooh. I know. And we were lucky we get you know cheap software through um, statewide consortium, so we're able to, you know, for significantly less than we would to buy it from the brand new state stations where they um, offer great technology for them. Very exciting. Cool. Yeah. So we were able to add a new Wi-Fi system this year too. That continues to be a, obviously wildly popular. Um, you know, there's a lot of people in the world of months will be sitting outside of the Open or after the close, just to join the patio and you know, working on their Wi-Fi. Um, so we, um, again, we're just always looking for ways to keep people connected. Oh, the physical stuff is still there. Yeah, it's still there. The business and career center part of the library. Is there any outside funding that you think you can capture, state or any other? That's what we're looking at. Okay. Yep. So we have um, in the process right now. Um, Developing a plan just for them. We feel that they're um, based on what the you know, federal sources are saying about <coughs> the options. But we feel like we're taking the smart approach um, in our community to looking at business and workforce development. We heavily um, collaborative with other community organizations, obviously, kind of hand in hand with business in the chamber, really looking at what is the best fit for our community. Always seeking not to duplicate services, but identifying those gaps. And we feel really confident that we're going to. Um, Offer funders a really a good solid model of community approach. So, well, every economic development thing we go to, everyone says workforce, workforce, yep. workforce. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Yep. You know, we know that there are people, um, there's a, uh, came at the chamber as I was saying, you know, six page of jobs available, and we encounter every day that you know, individuals looking for jobs. And so, we recognize that within our local community, there really is a need for people to be able to connect. You know, with that. It's just not happening. And without a local approach, I think it won't be successful. Um, but that's just, just too far for our residents to get to if they have any kind of transportation issues. Um, and you know, limited hours, too, I think that we fortunately um, really <coughs> great So we're happy to be working with so many different partners. We partner with over 100 <coughs> agencies, state and local, to offer one of these programs with the other services that we offer as well. Leveraging, leveraging resources.
this way there all the way to you know the elderly to the homeless to the people without jobs and so Tammy's doing a great job and I think you're doing a great job so I still don't see where the raise is though. Yeah. There, yeah, there's no, it doesn't show, and I don't know if it's, it's a this typo. I don't see where the increase in that spent. This is gone, the $15,000. So the revenue yeah. line is not. So what do you, oh, the can't that's the reduction. So we're funding whatever that line is. Okay, yeah, so we get through. Don't worry, yeah, no, it's. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's what I saw. Yeah, that's what I saw. Yeah, that's what I that was support to continue up with that was the end of the Yeah. Yeah. So. You know, and again, you know, as we look at um, our partners, we are really working closely with our community partners, the Investor Career Center, Katie Camp, Waterloo Delta, um, really trying to think very thoughtfully and realistically about our workforce development initiatives locally. Um, we can see that the resume lab has, has been canceled. That's because we've had a staffing change. And it was a great opportunity for us to kind of pause and reflect as a community about what are, you know, um, uh, what is the, what's the best fit moving forward? You know, what are the needs of the community? How can we best steer people to the right resource? So we are really excited about the, the work that's happening. We're really excited about and grateful for the continued commitment by community partners who are eager to be with us at the table of finding solutions that work and are sustainable and won't break the bank. Um, that's really cool. Well, we're really excited at the library. We hope that you guys are too. It's National Library Week, so if you, um, if I can guilt all of you to come to the library at any time, um, then this is the week to do it. Sarah, do you, when you um, do workshops, do you take down what city people live in? Are they from all over? The work, our workshops are free and open to the public, okay. so they are open to the community. They have a library card to attend the program. Um, we find that. Um, because we work with statewide partners, people like in the community, you know, in the limited, in the organizations whose scope is larger, that we do see individuals come in from other communities to come you know, connect with service providers at the library. Um, so we're grateful for your being, bringing people into water. Um, but we're the only ones who offer this type of service to address that. So in Hamilton County, it's Augusta, it's a beautiful library. Is there a um, follow up to find out that the people that attend these things or you know, want to get jobs? Well, because we work with different partners, you know, we talk about the measurement um, a lot. Um, we all have different measurement tools, everyone's kind of gathering different data set, you know, with funding. And so as we continue to move forward as a community, we're developing kind of a really mature and thoughtful model of service. That's one of the big things that we're talking about. And it's exciting because the federal government's really, now that they've, they've put their ore in um, properly this time. And so they are being, you know, they're working with, um, so the Department of Commerce is working with Department of Labor, Health and Human Services, and the Department of Education, all together to be looking at things like, you know, evaluations, you know, are we tracking just where you get the job, are we tracking, you know, are you keeping the job six months out? You know, so, because there are not common sense of data that we can really work which is frustrating. It's nice to know that we all these that are affected. And so while we have some information, it's not as thorough as we would like it to be. So Sarah, I really applaud your efforts because I think you really represent the community inside the community. Because this is what this, uh, the Waterloo Public Library, and I think we have one of the most unique in the state because you have a lot of different things going on. The events are always ongoing. Just a cornucopia of knowledge and information. We sure think we appeal to a lot of different clientele, and I, and I can't think of anything more gracious than to have something like this inside the middle of the city. Thank you. It's, it's really a good thing. Well, I'm wondering, I'll have the new book. Well, you guys gave last just last week. We know He's been going to the library. You learned that. <laughs> I was sure the audio was great. We had some member representatives from Kennebec Valley and Trout Unlimited who just you know were at the library. It was a great evening. A bunch of anglers learning about the surprisingly rich fishing that is right in Iconic Bay. That having grown up here, I did not know about. But in the middle of June, if you go out to Happy, you can see ten foot long sturgeon, Atlantic sturgeon, leaping. You know, right off. That's amazing. 
Things you learn at the library. Yeah, you, you know, can fish. Slow dish, fishing day at the kind of bay. It's like 20 fish. Like a plug for the fishing, too. Thank you, Sarah. Well, great. Thank, thank you, you so much. I look forward to seeing you all again and maybe even at the library. Keep those non-fictions coming. Yes. I'm a voracious non-fiction reader. Although there are some great benefits of reading fiction, too. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you can do both at once. <laughs> so. I got a couple. But they're not. They're not cut up yet. Yeah. 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 Now, the police department, if you go to page 32 at the bottom line, number is uh, at 3,000,002, a 3% increase over our current year budget amount of 2,916,000. That 3% represents in dollars about 85,000 more dollars proposed. Um, the big piece of that $85,000 amount is 79,000 in one item. So Joe's going to point that out. Uh, it's the same item that we faced when we talked about the fire department, the uh, main state retirement system number. So uh, in that main state retirement, it's an increase of almost 80. <coughs> so Joe, I'm going to let you summarize it. Are you at councils? Uh, as Mike said, the big increase for our budget is mainly from the main state retirement. We have a total increase in our budget of about 80 something thousand dollars. If you take out the $72,000 for main state retirement increase, leaving a balance of probably 13, 14, 15 thousand dollars, that's the total increase I'll, I'll say represents the operational cost, so less than 1% um, of, of my total budget. To get down through some of the uh, expenditure categories to point out some of the uh, some of the expenses that I think uh, are significant. Uh, in our wage line, we actually went down about uh, $8,000, and that was a result of hiring new offices at a, at a lower uh, wage than the offices they replaced. So that was about an $8,000 decrease in our wage line. Um, we did have about a $10,000 increase in overtime that would represent the cost of uh, their salary increases for, for this coming year. If you jump down to our fringe benefits, again, the big one there was uh, Main State Retirement. Uh, FICA was also up about $3,000, so was in Medicare, and the rest of those were uh, up. But, uh, not very much, kind of insignificant. If you get down to our operating expenses, I hey, think. Joe, before you leave that uh, category of benefits, uh, it's going to sound like a stupid question. I should know, but on the health insurance number, did we program the proposed change to the new health insurance? Do you happen to remember? Because I don't. It must be in there because it it's lower. Be, it's lower. It's, we show that the group, let's do I went over that, that the group health insurance was down about $40,000. And, and so we're, we budgeted at that time, we came up with these numbers right. for the new insurance, which has been the subject of negotiations with the yes. U.S. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But it's not down $26,000 in the budget. Well, it's proposed at three eighty nine, dollars and we budgeted four thirty one. dollars Yeah. In the current year? Yeah, I'm looking at what we're projected for this. Right. We're really oh, at 402. Look at the actual budget was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we budgeted 431. Uh, you know, that 389, too, may be a function of the new people that came mm -hmm. on board. It Some of these with family insurance. Right. And they kind of they come on as single or they come on as family. That's a significant difference in uh, the cost of the health insurance. On the health? Yep. Okay, thank you. We'll let Joe keep going. Keep going. I'm going to be looking to see if shoot. Well, if we get out of the category of uh, operating expenses, 
we went down significantly, significantly in gas now because gas is much cheaper this year than it was. So it will be cheaper budgeting for the new fiscal um, budget for gas than it was for the current. We probably are down about 15000 there. Um, if you can add the safety supplies, we increased that about 11500 this is a coming year under the new budget, 15-16 budget, I'm going to have to purchase several new bulletproof vests, uh, some new tasers and other fairly expensive supplies. Our tasers are about 10 or 12 years old depending on the models. They're reaching the end of their shelf life. They're about $900 a piece. And it's really a tool that we can't be without. It's probably the tool that saves us from going hands-on, reduces the uh, number of times that we have to actually get into a physical confrontation. I say as far as risk management goes, tasers are our number one saver, without question. So the old antiquated tasers that we have are starting to break down. I need to start replacing those uh, so that we don't have to replace them all at one time. The same thing with our bulletproof vests. They have a shelf life of five years. We have several offices that are reaching that shelf life uh, come late this summer and into the fall, so we'll have to replace those. Those are about 700 bucks a piece. We got the gas, Joe. Um, is that something that's already been paid out? Do you have price on it? Well, what we do is to calculate what we're going to use for gas is we call Mark and we ask him what we should budget per gallon for gas. And I think this year, or this coming fiscal budget was two twenty five and last year was three dollars and something. Three ten. Three ten or three fifteen. Three fifteen. So in answer to your question, we haven't bid it out there. Okay. So public works and the police department are in one big giant bid? Correct. Mm -hmm. And we're in with main power options. So main power options does a bidding on behalf of oh, I don't know how many towns and cities and utilities, utility districts. So it's as a huge bidding pool. As opposed to the school, which actually does it. Yeah. But, well, they do their heating fuel uh, separate, of course, but on vehicle fuels, I'm not sure if vehicle fuels, you know, for their buses are part of our bid or not. So the health insurance is at the lower rates. Okay. Thank you, Chuck. All right. On the vests, Joe, the bulletproof vest, do we get a grant for, to provide half the cost? We do, from the Department of Justice, Justice Assistant Grant, what we call the JAG grant. Uh, no, excuse me, that's a different grant. A bulletproof vest grant from the Department of Justice pays for half. About $700 a piece, so uh, the grant pays for half. As you can see, I budgeted for three cars this year at $95,000. We have a replacement cycle, and if we keep with that cycle, which we just got back into because there was a few years that we uh, eliminated the vehicle for budget purposes, and this year would be the year that we would purchase uh, three vehicles. I mean, and you got three last year? Three last year. Next year would be two. So we bought three for 81. Why are you going to have to spend 95 for three? Are they the SUVs now that are bigger? Or? Well, they're SUVs, but the setups is what's really um, costing us. But what we factored in there was the trade-in price of the three, three vehicles that will go. That they'll actually take those and trade in. Did you factor in for the 81 or the 95? Well, no, we actually factored into. Uh, let's see, we it's like fourteen thousand more. Right. And is it, I know the radio, uh, the lighting, and radio pieces were much more. Is that the yes. reason for that increase? Really? Yes, because we were transitioning into cars that we didn't have before, so we <coughs> take a lot of the equipment out, our light bars, our um, the, what they call the tree, where all your radio equipment is on, uh, push bumpers, all those things that came off of sedan did not fit into or fit on. Uh, Chief, part of the uh, switched SUV, am I mistaken, I'm trying to remember, was that because they will last longer for mileage? Is that right? Or they are fully drunk. <laughs> right, but then, was that part of, wasn't that part of the, 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 the higher expected mileage or am I mistaken? 
But there are a number of reasons why I wanted to transition into the SUV. One of, one of them was uh, they are four-wheel drive. They're much larger cargo room in them. Uh, they provide you know, that all with a uh, drive that, that we need. Uh, their trade-in value is much more. And I think most departments are starting to transition over uh, to those uh, SUVs because they, they hold up better. Um, again, there's more cargo space. Uh, we're able to use them, the you know, versatility of carrying cargo and other things in them where we couldn't with the cruisers. Um, back seat to the cruisers are so small that um, you have very tough time to get a prisoner in there without, without hitting his knees. So for all those reasons, we think that going to the SUV is much more um, economical car than, than, the, uh, than the sedans. Including again, much higher trade value. How's the gas mileage? The gas mileage is, um, I believe, they were rated for around 22 or 23, and our cars are at 25 or 26. That's under perfect conditions. You know, that going downhill with the wind behind you is neutral. Uh, best case scenario, but uh, city driving, obviously, you're not going to get. You're not going to. So how many full-time officers do you have in the city department? 31, but one of them is assigned full-time to MDPA. Do you have any part-time officers? No part-time officers. You don't do any reserves or anything like that? Pardon? Reserve officers, you don't hire any? And the whole part-time, like open bed? Yeah, we don't hire any part-time officers whatsoever. All our officers are full-time. You're probably you're hard to train some part-time with you. You know, having part-time officers is a challenge. There's no doubt about that. You have to train them. They should be trained as well as full-time officers. They do the very same job. But where do you put your training job if you put them into your full-time people? Um, however, there are a lot of good part-time officers out there, and uh, some of the small departments absolutely count on them to supplement their, you know, their full-time people. Uh, so, with that comes those issues. Do you feel as though you're full of staff right now? We are. We do have a, an officer in the academy. So we uh, light one officer out there on the street. But as soon as he comes back at the end of May, we'll be full of staff. I, I was reading that we were going to start about hiring extra officers, perhaps the weekend and so forth. Any, any possibility you guys could help them out, or would that stretch you guys to think? Um, we tried that, right? Yeah, that, uh, you mean to let our officers work part time in one Well, no. Like share, share coverage, yeah. Share coverage. You know, we made a proposal to Winslow Joe and drafted up a proposed budget that would cover both towns. Yeah, right. And it didn't go very far no. at all. Um, there would have been a savings, I, I think, from both communities. But we should definitely revisit that. Last week, we were going to be open. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, Jerry was here. Yeah, right. And that's what we do. We, we went round and round with the Mike and myself, <coughs> Ida Grossman, who was involved. They just went receptive and want to go. Well, that was, that was a plan. That was a quite a few years ago. And that was a plan to make one police station and one force, I think. Different, different managers pressures. Have yeah. that now. Yes. Which is another key. I know for a time we, we yeah. covered Fairfield for what, six, seven months? Didn't we? Yeah, we did. Yeah. We did. And we did that successfully. Right. With the we, chief's position. We provided administrative oversight. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It wasn't really control. Right. Yeah. What we proposed was contracting services. To try to merge two police departments together, we had some in depth discussion. 10 or 15 years ago yes. with Winslow. And there were so many issues that we just couldn't overcome. And that was retirement, union. Everything was so different between Yeah, years. insurance. So, but, but you're right. If they're looking to hire someone for the weekend shift, so. and, and we could instead contract our guys to do hours over there, it wouldn't be impacting things like 
you know, pay, pay raises or, or, or retirement and that kind of thing. We just be dealing with money out, I would think. No? Maybe. Well, there's a couple issues there. Number one, um, we have so much overtime in the city. Yeah. Regular overtime, you know, vacations, sick time, uh, details, uh, Colby hires us often, traffic, that I would find it difficult to yeah. have officers over there. In addition, I don't think our officers would go over there and work for $13, $14 an hour, which they probably take by that people. I don't think you see that happen when they can work here. During the school year, he does not put in a lot of time because he spends most of his time at the school. But a lot of the kids that he sees at the school obviously come uh, from the south end. We have a new south uh, school resource, school resource officer that we just put in there, Damon Lefferts, a terrific, a terrific job. And during the summer months. He'll be uh, available for the South End much more than he is during the school. Will he be stationed down at the South End Teen Center? Will he be stationed down at the South End Teen Center? Will there be a, uh, a place that the kids have a question to ask him and that's not going to go? Yeah, I mean, just, I'm just curious to where he could be, where, where he's going to be in the summer so the children have questions to ask him. We are going to try to get him on some sort of schedule in the South End. Remember, both those jobs uh, had a full-time officer at one time. We had a full-time yes. health end officer. We had a full-time school resource officer. We've combined those two into one. And so he splits his time between the school, during the school year, and that takes up most of his time. Uh, in the summer, we do use him in the south end, and sometimes he supplements when we're staff. You know, we the patrol out of the areas. But we will get together with uh, Mr. Soul and try to come up with some kind of schedule where he could be down there and the children wanted to commit at that time. He'd be available. I know he's doing a great job doing this. Very, very personal. He was right off of that position, that's for sure. Yeah, okay. that was a nice job. How do you feel with uh, the resources for dealing with? Yeah, I mean, we have an obvious drug problem. And you feel really constrained in the resources. What, what do we do to, to start putting our resources to really routing these people out? Or is, is there something we can do? Is there more we can do with working with our agencies? I'm just going to leave you a little ignorant on the topic. Well, Waterville well, has its fair share of drug problems. We're no different than any other community. We have a detective division, and I have one detective who comes exclusively to have trucks. Uh, occasionally, when he gets overloaded, he may um, use another detective, or maybe even some patrol officers. We're starting a new unit for a hotel motel interdiction team, which will be comprised of our officers out there. In addition, uh, we have one full-time officer embedded into MDEA. So we're also working in partnership on the state level uh, with our surrounding communities. Uh, the drug investigators is usually someone designated for that job. <laughs> Winkle, Fatfield, and Oakland, uh, we work with those. So it's a huge problem. And uh, trying to make some inroads in it. Joe, when you Thank said you. the hotel motel thing, is that because most of these out-of-towners set up shop at some hotel somewhere? And Yes. Is there some? They shack up with somebody. Else. It happens a lot. Too. Yeah. 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 But but I know because I've done some drug cases where they've actually gone to one hotel or the other and set up shop and then got all kinds of travel. And you guys pick up on it. But is there some kind of an educational process you can work with the hotel management people to be on the lookout for, or is that that's obviously infringing on constitutional rights, I suppose. If you try to go too far, right? Well, that's our whole concept of the hotel, uh, motel interdiction team that we've set up, and I really don't want to discuss yeah. all yeah. the strategies yeah. they yeah. use. Yeah. But no. yeah, I, I okay. so you said you told us how many you have employed. So at any given shift, how many officers? Like, say at two a.m., how many officers are on? Depends on what day of the week, 
Is they on Friday, a Friday night, one o'clock in the morning. At two o'clock. <coughs> Excuse me, two o'clock yeah, in the morning. Yeah. We could have as little as three, as many as five, with a supervisor, depending on days off, vacation, sick time. <coughs> and the last time I went over, and obviously we had four. We have overlapping shifts. That's how. It is, you know, the, the, you know, Friday night, one o'clock, the bars are getting out. We have three officers on, and fight at Bob, and I'm sure, or some not. But fight at one of the bars. Um, fight at one of the bars, and uh, you know, all all your officers are probably going to be designated to that fight, right? Could very well be. Have to remember that Waterville draws a large crowd of young adults because we have that type of entertainment from them from the surrounding areas, and part of being a small service center. So as a result, we have a lot of those types of issues uh, in the evening hours, but the daytime are just as busy, but they're a different type of busy. You know, we have a tremendous amount of uh, accidents and, and shoplifting calls, and uh, nighttime is where you do get the fights, you get most of the drunks, uh, will be wise, that type of stuff uh, happens in, in the evening hours. I, I would assume that, like any other city, we typically hear all the negative, you know, in the media and, and you know, the drugs and things. We probably never hear about all the things that you prevent and the things that, that you take care of, I'm assuming. So, well, actually, when we hear about the drugs, it's because Yeah, but I, I, I assume that there's probably a lot of things that are A lot of those things with, are not medical. And you're absolutely right, particularly in the summertime. And we've had discussions about the shooting in the downtown area or the fan of the the conduct, and we put a significant effort in trying to stop that. And so, still occasionally, you'll see that someone's been arrested for criminal mischief for breaking a window, or arrested for disorderly conduct. But how do you measure the number of incidences that we stop by the high saturation that we've done in the downtown area over a week or two? I think it's significant. I think it's significant. I think uh, you know that we certainly prevent a lot of that stuff from happening. You also work with, uh, is it the elderly? You dispatch calls up the elderly or if they don't answer? What's that program? You, uh, That's the Are You Okay program. Yeah, it's an automated uh, dialing program that we can put their numbers in and they can be called two or three times a day. If they don't answer, then that so triggers a response. An officer goes to check to see that. Do you have a lot of people in that program right now? Or? I'm not sure just how many we had when it refers. Uh, advertise the program with a lot of folks, and that was, uh, that was on the Mars 12, 14 years ago. Some of those folks have dropped off, some of them have even passed away, and, and so uh, we just advertised again recently that it's available, and in fact, quite a few people signed up. Thank you, Chief. Two more accounts under police. One is the animal control, which is the next page. Uh, a little bit of an increase there. Utilities. Oh. Well. You'll see that there's an expenditure for our utilities. This is the first year. For the building. Uh, for the building. And as you can see, we never dealt with utilities once we were in the old city hall. That came out of another budget. And so we are going to be on our first year where we'll have a complete year after June 30th when we can look back on kind of the historical financial data to see how much the propane was, we'll see how much the electricity was. But uh, as you can see, the utilities were propane, again, 15,000, utilities, 23,000, uh, and that total. Cleaning supplies. Where are we with the natural gas? Okay. I'm not sure where they're going to put that. Okay. We are all set up. All set See? up. Right. <coughs> yeah. set up. Set up. But they haven't run the line from the street to the right. road. So it's still a problem. Okay. <clears throat> Just funny, I'm going to go down there. I mean, they put that from us up down by uh, the Fairfield. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me see an increase in dog licensing. 
coming in, and did you see that as far as uh, on the increase, more people coming in to get their dog's license? I, I don't see that there's a big increase in that. The animal control officer takes a look at those folks who have it. Like just a dog. Have you seen an increase in dog related incidents within the city? Like all the people who want to queer road them with dog shit, excuse me. There, <laughs> there is a increase where with Quarry Road, a lot of people walk their dogs out there. We've gotten some complaints and we've uh, matter of fact dedicated the animal control officer there so many hours a week to try to get a handle on that and also on the low uh, front street. For the lower uh, parking lot, Pedophiles. Pedophiles. So actually, that item is mislabeled. It, it, it shouldn't say dog license fines. It should say license. It should say uh, dog license costs. I mean, this dog, dog three thousand is a, something we pay out for additional dog license right. work. So when the code of animal control officer has to go out and chase unlicensed dogs or people who are not controlling their dog, we pay, that's 3000 is additional cost. He gets the fines. He gets the fines. We collect the fines and we pay him. Okay. So, so it's an expense. Is, so that's what, we, right, that's what we anticipate that we will collect All right. from those fines. Okay. So I guess it's a revenue and an expense at the same time. Correct. It is. It's sort of like the details. Yeah, special details and their operating budget. We pay your we police tried. officers to be out on the road controlling traffic and we get reimbursed. And we get reimbursed. Okay. So we show it as a revenue and an expense. Yeah. So it's basically war. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> and the other account in within the police uh, total budget is comm center. Uh, yeah, I think there's a modest increase. 536 to 554. Uh, there are no significant increases in communication time. Full time salary and wages went up to about $6,000. Big increase in the equipment, Joe. The equipment. Um, is that for the consoles? Is that a diagram of the discussion? We we are going to buy portable radios for the officers, okay. and we put that in that same line because it goes along with our console radios and all the other radio equipment that we have in there. So we put it in that line item. And again, each officer carries a small portable radio. Uh, we've already replaced nine of them, and we've 18 of them. We've got 18 officers out there, and they're about $900 a piece. So we want to start replacing those before they get to the point where they really fail. The last thing we want them to go out there on foot and have a radio that doesn't work. So Joe, have you heard anything outside from the private standpoint of possible donating of body cameras? Yes. I know it's been discussed. I know there's been uh, talk. But I, as far as reality, is that possible? Yes, I've had... Um, I've had someone approach me and, and say that they were willing to purchase two. Is that something you feel like you need? I think over the next several years you're going to see most police departments across the country, across the country move to the body more the campus because of all the police related shootings that we've had lately and uh, the fallout from those. Mm -hmm. And that uh, people realize that if we had body movement cameras, you would see exactly like what happened, like in South Carolina, just in the last few days, where the officer shot uh, the suspect down there. But getting body worn cameras uh, brings into play a lot of other issues that we have to deal with. We have to come up with a policy. That policy has to deal with. Uh, how we're going to use them, or where we're going to use them, when we're going to turn them on, are they going to be allowed uh, to be on when they're in uh, people's private homes, when the officers go into hospitals, if they're a violation of that camera that's going on. Do we let officers view the video before they write their reports? 
if we do, there may be a challenge to when did you establish a probable cause out there on the street or when you watched the video. <coughs> then there's the huge issue of storage. 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 And that's going to be the long-term expense, is storage. And with those videos, it's going to, you know, again, utilize huge uh, digital storage. And the cost is uh, really significant. There'll be, an issue, there'll be an issue of discovery. Uh, how long are we going to store those? Do, do your, excuse me, do your police cars already have the cameras that are filming? We have two dash cams, but they're not <coughs> operational yet because the policy is not complete. I would like to see some national standard set. Right now, the Maine Criminal Justice Academy, who uh, developed model policies, they're just kind of sitting back because they're not sure where they're going with these policies. They're looking and they're talking to the AG's office and the DA's office. Uh, you know, what are you going to require for discovery? Are you going to want, you know, copies of every video? How much is that going to cost? Logistically, time involved. Freedom of information request. Are those videos going to be available? So, all of a sudden, all these issues and privacy issues come into play. It's just not like, we'll just go by the body cams and get the glasses. Um, from a national standpoint, it's going to be obviously more pressure from a federal level to take a look at this because obviously all this coverage that we're seeing and the more and more acts and, and, and situations that the police are finding themselves in, it's almost like you would think that some kind of federal grant or, or something could be done to try to uh, expedite this. Well, I think there has been some discussion at the federal level where the president actually said that he would like to appropriate. I can't remember the number, 200 something million dollars to um, help departments across the country purchase, you know, whether to purchase the body cam, or whether that comes about or not, I don't know. Just like... Do we have cameras around the city right now? Um, no. Well, I'm sure. Yeah. Buildings. Different city. Well, sure. private buildings. Right, right, but the, the, the city doesn't have the city, like, government on the cameras that are watching. We had one camera operational that was the street lights. They have the capability to view, uh, but not stop. And we wouldn't be storing every minute of every officer a day. We wouldn't just store those important parts that are connected with the That's all part of what you got to figure out. Well, again, you have to figure that out because that becomes very problematic. When do you leave the camera on and when do you turn it off? When it's convenient, officer? Well, no, no, no. You have it on, but, but you probably only store those portions oh, sure. of the data you felt were. Right. We'd only store those things that were obviously. Yeah, connected with some kind of offensive stuff. Right. I, I see, Joe, that you're. Uh, that you're in your revenue lines down a bit. It's just for me conservative, is that what it is? Looking at page three, and apparently 13, 14, they had over 300,000 revenue. Last, this year you projected to 285, and I think we're recommending 281. We're just going to be conservative, is that what we're trying to do? Owners, page three. So you're talking about the actual to page three. Well, yeah, I'm looking at back at the big difference is going to be special details. Yeah. I think they always budget a lower number because you never know how many of those are going to get. Yeah. And that's a watch because you did. I, we could budget 20000 and it could come out to be 40000 yeah. If there's a big project and they're asking for a lot of offices, it's just a guess. So it's just being concerned. Has Summit hired any of your officers on the gas and stuff this week? Up the parking lot. Summit, Summit, they've hired us, right? For the gas line work? No. No? Oh, yes, excuse me, they did in the intersections, yes. But most of the street stuff, they don't. Um, they don't run flag. There were some that they didn't, and a lot of it they did. Big intersections like. The, yeah, uh, the College Ave. Ave. College Ave. Main Street. Main Street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you.
Jeff, there we go. Uh, I want to take a moment while Chip is here to recognize him. He received an award today at the Blaine House. Well, to recognize your service on the... Uh, it was an award from the main... Uh, i trying to remember the name of it. It's like the main coalition of children's advocacy centers. And uh, myself and a supervisor from the... DHHS Child Protective Services Unit were co-advisor, uh, co-chairs of the advisory committee for our local Children's Advocacy Center, which serves all of Kennebec and uh, Somerset counties. And uh, Michelle Guligo and I have been involved in the Children's Advocacy Center right from its inception, to building the policies and protocols, uh, the operation of it, pulling the multidisciplinary team together that includes folks from obviously police and. Uh, DHHS, but also um, folks from uh, mental health services, faith-based services, transportation services, everything you could think of to try to help uh, provide wraparound services for children that have um, made, an, uh, made a, a disclosure of um, sexual abuse. So uh, for, for the work that we've done over the past years, um, we were recognized today at the Blaine House. It was a very nice ceremony, and, and as I said there, um, at the, at the Ceremony is probably during my 20 years here. Um, I'll have my, my 20 year anniversary next week. Probably the thing I'm most proud of having been involved in. It's just an amazing group of people and the work they do with uh, with our, our community's most vulnerable population is really amazing. So it was uh, very nice nice to take a short moment to, to be recognized, but then try to turn the focus right back on to our, our children where it belongs. So yes, it was, it was really neat. Part of the book, obviously alphabetical. And it's page nine. And uh, I'll start out by saying it's a 17% increase. Ah! But there, there are reasons for that. Okay. Okay. I'm going to have Randy help me with what those reasons are. Hurry up. Okay. <laughs> We're losing people. Uh, Randy, go, go ahead. Take us uh, down category by category. Sure. Uh, well, first, I, I want to address the 17% increase. Uh, the difference is, is that the current fiscal budget that we're in right now um, accounts for our closure of two months for our own runway reconstruction project, which we anticipate beginning uh, either the week of the 27th or the uh, first week of May. Um, so that 17% uh, majority of that is a uh, loss of revenue since we're obviously not going to be able to sell fuel or receive aircraft. Um, so that's where the majority of it is. When you really look back at 2013, 2014, the fiscal year we had uh, previous, uh, we're only seeing an increase of $4,020 from that year to our current year. So that's more of a status quo. Um, going through each category here, full-time salaries and wages, you'll, you will see uh, a, uh, about a $10,000 increase uh, over what I had requested um, and projected for this, this year and over what was approved uh, last year. And where that falls uh, is we are now uh, taking on 100% of the expense of, of one particular employee, which is at Lively. He's our, uh, maintenance technician. Uh, in 2013-2014, we had 50% uh, of his salary in our budget, 50% was in public works. Uh, this last or current fiscal year that we're in right now, we absorbed 75% of that, and now we're going to see 100% including all uh, fringe benefits for him. Uh, again, with that increase, I will again refer back to the 13-14 to the 15-16, and that there's only a $4,020 increase. Keep in mind, he was working 100% of the airport. Right. We so just weren't charging 100% of his time there. So we're trying to make sure that the numbers that you are seeing here actually and truly reflect the work that we're doing at the airport. And now that the airport is starting to make the steps uh, that it's making, we're able to more appropriately absorb that cost. Does the public works budget reflect a decrease? 
Of course. Yes. yes. Of course. <laughs> it does. Right, Mark? Yes. You've taken out Ed salary. But it, we only had 25% in public works. As you said, it started out 50-50, right? Right, it was 50-50. And then we said, no, yeah, it's not really 50-50. He's up there all the time. We'll make it 75-25, and finally, we had to admit it. He's there 100% of the time. We want to know what it costs you in the airport, which you can't get to work right yeah. uh, Any questions on full-time? So part-time and temp wages, uh, not really any change on that from uh, last year to the upcoming. Um, and we're going to do the same for the uh, overtime. So again, the big change on that is absorbing uh, that maintenance technician position 100%. Uh, you'll s In the next category. The fringe, fringe benefits, that is where the change also comes in, is absorbing. Especially all in the health insurance. Correct. Because we have had full costs in that. Right. Yep. Whereas that should have been a decrease given the change in the insurance plan, but right. Ed coming on. Right. Um, there really are no other big items in that category, right, Randy? Nope, not at all. Uh, everything else has been pretty much status quo on that. Uh, moving on to the typical expenditures, uh, telephone cable. Um, let me, let me, let me stop you one second. Sure. The French benefits, mm -hmm. you requested 40600 the manager recommends 5,000 more. Why is that? Well, when my department requests, you'll nice also guy. reflect back. Yeah, uh, you. you'll reflect back to the personal services uh, for 109.830. Um, when I made the request, I stayed at the 75, and then when we met, we decided amongst okay. us, we said yes, we'll, we'll take 100%. I don't have a problem with that. So you'll see that increase 10,000, and the fringe benefits subsequently reflects. Makes me look bad. Makes him look bad. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> That's just how the numbers work out. I got it back down below, cutting some of the other numbers. So, in the changes in the other category, the operating expense, um, point out the big changes there. Certainly, one of them was the insurance. Right, going from six thousand. What was that again? Charles? Basically, we've we've charged the airport three thousand dollars of our general policy that the city pays. No other department gets charged anything. That was a number that I couldn't even figure out how it was justified. So I said, why do we charge them for something that we can't even justify? We don't charge anybody else. So I just left. I moved that back into the general fund insurance line. Randy has a separate hangar keepers policy which is now the only piece that's budgeted for in the airport. So you'll see a shift over to the general fund, but there was no justification for that 3000 There's no, no real way for me to say what it should be, and I didn't know why we would do it for just the airport and no other department. That's why I went from six to 2400 Right. The insurance remaining is the insurance specific to aviation for when we're handling aircraft that MMA, uh, our city insurer, would not cover because uh, it's not part of the policy. Uh, telephone cable, um, you'll see an increase from what we had approved in the last budget of 2600 up to 4500 uh, What we're seeing here now is uh, we just did a network upgrade uh, with BlackBerry Aviation, with Airlink Aviation, with Air New England, um, as well as with our own internet needs uh, where all of our credit card stuff, uh, everything that we do now is through the internet. Uh, so we've had to basically bump up uh, the, the bandwidth that we can receive in order to conduct our duties. Um, previously, it was very, very slow, um, difficult to uh, run credit cards, things of that nature, and, and especially with the self-service fuel island that's going to be going in, everything's going to be running through that, um, as well as how we connect to City Hall uh, current. Um, running QuickBooks, the different types of systems that we utilize and uh, co-share uh, access to them. So this allows us to be able to do that. Any questions on that? See here, advertising remains the same. Uh, we discussed property insurance. Um, 
utilities, we will see a slight increase on that just because the cost of CMP is going up. Um, though you would have seen a much higher number. Um, however, we did do a, um, a significant upgrade through electricity main, um, which are existing um, actual as numbers and our facilities maintenance budget don't reflect yet because we haven't received the rebates but we did a little over ten thousand dollars worth of led light upgrades within the building as well as in the hangar which should and has decreased the overall usage um, and cost so we're using a lot more uh, in terms of light and a lot less of the electricity consumption when did you do that switch over on that? Uh, we had uh, the old style like T8 lights throughout the whole building. Um, they consumed a lot of electricity. We switched everything inside the building uh, to LED and inside the hangar to, I believe it was a T12 um, fixture um, from the old halogen bulbs that you, you leave on, you just watch your dial go around. Uh, so, for example, last month I saw about a thousand dollar electrical bill for the entire airfield. That's all of our facilities, runways, everything like that, whereas previously I would have seen just that amount of the building alone. So um, just trying to, right, so we're, we're trying to reduce how we're doing things by making different changes like that. So. Yeah, good job with that. I see about 50,000 plus increase in aviation fuel. Right, and that is also going to be reflected um, in the closure um, where when we're closed, we're not going to be selling the fuel. So, a few months of our busier season. Uh, we so why, why are we increasing so much by 50 grand? Fuel is expensive. <laughs> Um, so I would say, the uh, current year so budget was reduced because of the closure. Okay, we assumed it was the two busiest months of the year too. We we had it in the budget closed last summer. Correct. Well, I know, in 2016, 15 through 16, it's gone up um, probably 50,000 from last year's projected amount. If we're closing for two months, why are we projecting? No, we're no, we're closing this year. We're not closing next year. Yeah. Right. So we we'll be open yeah. July one. So we're going to sell more fuel. So the reduction is in this fiscal year. Okay, so well, when are we close? May. May. May 1. Okay, and we'll just close through? May, June, hopefully July 1, back off on the line. Okay, so we're not so, going to so sell. So we're assuming $50,000 more sales, right? In next we'll have 12 months of sales next year instead of 10 months. Okay. And I guess um, it's not. That's why we budget. reflected on the revenue sheet. Now I'm looking at the revenue, and we get about a $1,000 difference in cash. You're jumping ahead to the revenue. Okay. We want to make sure we've got to that, so it's not a bad time to do that. Well, I know. Every expenses are tied to revenue. We've yeah, you'll, fuel, you'll right? see that uh, page four. Page four is the revenue uh, page on the airport, and there have been some changes as to how we've formatted it. So I'm going to let Chuck, I think, explain. Uh, we're showing now the revenues, page four. Yes. Yeah. So you're looking at the projected line, and I'm looking at that, thinking that the projected is wrong. Is that 314 is incorrect? You're back on the expense side? What's that? No, revenue. That's what you were just looking at, right? You think there's more than 314? Less. Less. Look at, look at the actual through February. You still get a credit card sales, right? Yeah. Okay. That's 152000 Okay. Yeah. 314 is too high. There was a formula in there that said take the greater of the actual or the budget, and that should have been adjusted down because. Mm -hmm. But oh. that's going to get fixed, and this will go into the whole sales thing. If you drop down a few lines and you see, right now we record revenue. If, it, if someone pays a credit card for it, I don't care what they're buying, it's a credit card sale. If they're invoiced for it, it's an invoice sale. If they pay cash, it's a cash sale. I don't care whether it's a lease, fuel, Whatever they do, it's how we get the money. So you're saying the 50 grand showing that's increased on the expense side look, look should at, be reflected on the look at the show. budget to budget. I, I'm looking at 2013. We made 426, and this year we're projected to make 420. Correct. And I wasn't talking what, about what, all what these investments we've made in the airport. I thought we'd see the sky. What right. did fuel cost? 
two years ago. What was the price per gallon? I don't know. It's got to be down by now, doesn't it? Right. So therefore, you may sell the same. You may sell the same number of gallons, but you're going to get a lot less revenue out of it because we have to price it cheaper because it's down. The one thing I, I don't know if this is what you're referring to, uh, but the approved budget 2014 2015 was 325 555, and we're on expenses or revenues. We're on revenues. We're all revenue. So we were talking about fifty percent, fifty thousand uh, uh, dollar increase in the cost, but now we're looking at the revenue side. We're going three twenty five, five fifty five to the projected four twenty zero fifty five. So ninety five thousand increase. So it's ninety five thousand increase. Well, yeah, but look at thirteen fourteen. You mean four twenty six? And we've been making these big investments in the airport. I thought we were going to we translate the, to but the closure of two months falls in the fourteen. You're, you're saying how come we're going to sell, we're going to have less revenue yeah. next year than we had last year? Two years ago. Throw yeah. out this year. And, and I get what you're saying. And I would say two Price. things. Randy yeah. is relatively conservative when it comes up. Very conservative. And I, I don't want to throw out our numbers not knowing, plus we're going to do some advertising and see where things go, but you'll see the, the $6,000 difference between 13 and 14 and 15, 16 is really the estimate of the, the reduction of fuel costs mm -hmm. conservatively. But it, it is a fair statement to say, and I would hope to see an increase in traffic. I just can't quantify it. I mean, that's the thing. Mayor Heck was big on the airport. Right. We mm -hmm. put in all kinds of investments, and I, I supported most of those. And, and I'm just concerned we aren't seeing the, the, the jump. One of the other things that I, and I'll go back to um, is when we talked about in 2013, 2014, how we didn't have any, we had 50% of the, the maintenance positions funding. Mm -hmm. Now we have 100%, but you're only seeing a $4,000 increase in your expenses. How we're shifting things around um, and being able to change and modify that uh, to reflect more services at the airport at less cost. So we're doing more with less just because of what we've been building. Mm -hmm. So you're not seeing an increase because we're continuing to increase services. You're, or you're, you're seeing more services for less guys money. on different payrolls. <laughs> Sounds like you guys got a show game done. No, what well, we're trying to do is more accurate. I, I was the one that said that. I said, listen, the Fed's out there 100%. Let's stop saying that it costs us 400000 on the airport and it costs us 420 or whatever the number is. Let's put the real numbers out there so we know what it costs. And what I will say is, from a revenue standpoint, we're switching to tracking it by what we sell, not how we collect the money. So going forward, I mean, we can tell you this year how many gallons we're budgeting of each type of fuel at what price and at what cost. We couldn't have done that in the prior years. Right. No, we now we can do that. So next year we can sit at this table and say, listen, we're budgeting to have fuel sales up. We're going to sell an extra 5,000 gallons of jet fuel or whatever. So we can answer your question because you're, you're right. We're investing in it. We think we're going to have we're going to have a brand new runway. We're having all this other stuff. We hope it's going to pay off. But He's been saying the same things you have yeah. been saying. Believe me. All these I, investments. How are we going to pay for it? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on all this, and I'm trying to set it up with Randy so we can actually answer the questions that are our good questions. How many gallons did we sell? Because you know, you've got a, a price variation where you could say we're selling more fuel, but we're getting less revenue out of it. We bought fuel in the fall, unfortunately, at a high price. It's tough to sell right now unless mm -hmm. you want to sell for a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and at this point, too, uh, the other thing I can say is that with the last several years being investing years, we're hoping to now be able to with this runway project to turn this corner and actually start seeing something come back. Okay, we'll talk to you next year. That's right. <laughs> I'll be here. And hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> I'm pretty we can sure actually. You're not going to forget. Hopefully, we can actually report on some of this stuff throughout the year as well. We don't have to wait 12 months to get the answer to this. We can start. I mean, Randy does a good job of tracking. We have QuickBooks set up out there to track sales. We'll be able to compare year to year now. On a monthly basis, on a semi-annual, whatever they want. And I and I can tell you that uh, March and April we've seen uh, pretty substantial increases in our sales just this year alone. But it's going to be hard to reflect those increases because we would have continued that through May and June. But I can't show you those numbers because they're going to be closed. So, right, Randy, is the crosswind runway going to be down for the 14 months? Yes. So everything's down. For two Everything. <coughs> We notified well, everybody who has a plane out there and says, get your plane out of here or you can't use it. Everything's in place. It's definitely going to happen. Yes. 
Now, we had a pre-construction meeting this morning, uh, which is why I'm all muddy. Uh, running around the mud all morning long with contractors. And uh, right now, uh, we're hoping to have things start showing up on, uh, on site starting Monday. Uh, hope we may possibly close one of the runways down the 27th and uh, start doing some test strips for the pavement. And then the following Monday, May 4th, uh, we'll get complete closure and we'll be 60 days from that date. And I encourage you all to come out and take a look. I was going to ask, um, when it's done, are you going to have a opening type thing? Or can, I mean, I feel like there's so much of the community that really doesn't know much about this area. Right. Is there a way that we could capitalize on this as a publicity for the airport and invite? Maybe a, another business after hours? Yeah, yep. yep. we could certainly uh, look at doing something. I, I know one of the things I'm, I'm trying to do, too, is make sure that uh, while we're doing this project that it becomes more visible. You'll probably see some of the tree clearing behind the Dodge dealer. You can actually see the airport now. Yeah. Uh, we're going to clean that all up, make that a little bit nicer. That's all we can do. We need to a certain point. Some yeah. of the clearance. Yeah. 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 Yeah
but that cost money too. The winning people of this is the community, which is really what our goal is, is to bring business into Waterville. Right. So we may be staying like this right now and hoping that we'll see more revenue when the city makes some money on the airport. But right now we're, we're offering more services. So the people making out are the hotels, the restaurants, the stores, um, car rental places, things of that nature. What about number of landings? Do you keep track of that? Kind of we do. We have a new program uh, that was uh, installed uh, last year. Um, and we're building a database right now and accounts um, operations. So every time somebody comes in and lands, there's a certain amount of radio traffic. There's an algorithm that goes into it. It captures all of that, and we get a report every month. So those numbers bear that out? They get more visits and so forth? Mm -hmm. Yep. Randy, how's Black Bay doing? They're doing very well. Um, they're booked far past September in terms of uh, aircraft uh, reconditioning. Uh, maintenance has been full in the hangar. Um, they're actually getting a lot of business from Augusta with the uh, UMA program that uh, is going on with maintenance from the flight. Uh, Black Bear does a lot of the 100-hour operations, uh, the inspections and, and whatnot on those aircraft, so we see an influx on that as well. So even though they have that program, we're seeing the benefits at Water Bowl as well. Thank you, Randy. Thank you. I'm going to capture you and the other department heads while you're here because capital improvements is the next topic. We don't have any capital improvements budgeted other than the paving, the $250,000 for our paving, which really, that's an annual, every year expense. Not really what I think of capital improvement, but I think the important thing, and I thank Mark for helping me with this, is for us to look at what uh, is an average annual expenditure for capital improvements, buildings, equipment, airfields, including all of the city facilities. Uh, so we tried to give you a 14 year history. I hope I'm not in your way here. Uh, in looking at what we've actually spent. And you can see, when we've had down years, this is when we've ended up with a bond to try to catch up on those years where we haven't hit that average amount of two million one per year. And if you look at all of our buildings, all of our fire trucks, all of our public works equipment, and think about how long they last, we got to spend about two million bucks a year, a lot of money. So the down years we've made up by borrowing money, and we're of course doing that again in this coming year at three million. Um, so I passed out that five-year look at capital improvements, and some of these items are wish list items. The cost on some of them is probably more of a guess than an engineered estimate. Um, so these are guide posts to go by, whether it be Parks and Rec or Airport or Public Works. You know, Public Works really is by far our biggest capital improvement. Uh, sinkhole. Yeah, drain line, sinkhole. Right. <laughs> So, when we talked about your equipment, Mark, it, you know, it looks like you need about how much every year averaged out to really stay ahead of it? Half a million on average. Five, six hundred thousand, right? We keep us in a you know, 10, 12 year old equipment. Right, right. So, if we go two years with zero, then we're kind of one million bucks in the hole on your equipment replacement. Um, some of it can go 15 years, 17 years. Mm -hmm. Other things obviously don't make it that far. Are we just looking right now at 15, 16? Right, correct. So we're not going to discuss the other stuff? No, I, I'm open to any questions, but it wasn't our purpose tonight to go over the next three years out. But just to let you see that we've done some planning, Matt has looked at his parks and rec equipment and what he thinks we're going to need. 
Uh, Chief LaFountain has looked at his equipment. And so we've got a plan for three years out, but we didn't plan to get into details tonight on that. Um, on that traffic light. Right. The 125 is the KMD light. The, the airport road. Sure the airport road. Is there a second timetable for that? But yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Uh, that should, uh, that traffic signal, KMD and the airport road, I hope will be done by July. It might. Maybe when we're uh, doing that and the people are working on lights, they can actually sync our lights on KMD like everywhere else you go. So you know, stop every other light. The only place I know you get off the highway and you, you, you stop and you go and you stop and you go. Hmm. You should mention that one there. But well, we are going to have to realign them when that new one goes in. I'll make it up. So Mike, the, 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 the approximately two million dollars in public, uh, I'm sorry, capital improvement request out of uh, public works, those are both covered by law. The road, the million for road, yep, and the 940 in equipment. Those are both in the bond amount, John, that's uh, three million here, yep. If you add up lines 2000, for 2014-15, which is this current year, and 15-16, which is next year, those two amounts equal what we are going to bond for. The three, the three million, oh, 22. Right. So that stuff was approved back in December. We bonded for where we're going to find out next week the rates of the bond, hopefully. Yes. And, uh, oh, and so not 1617, just up no. until 1516. Correct. Now, Mark would have to speak to the million dollars for the roads we'll get spent over more than We might year. spend it, uh, Dana, in 1617, but no items in the 1617 column are included in the bond. I'm going to pipe in here because I think this is an appropriate time uh, and we, I'll share more uh, with everybody um, as we have the report. I was on the phone call with uh, the credit rating agency and one of the reasons that they outlined for keeping our credit rating where it was at as a positive was that we have decided to hold the line on our reserves and not continue to move the target and change the amount of reserve funds that we're going to raise to fill our budget. And that's a very, I said that's important, I, 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 we had, I had a long conversation uh, with the, uh, the woman who was from the credit rating agency. And so I think it's important that people realize how it is so important that we don't continue just to vote. If we, nobody dislikes taxes more than this guy. But I also realize we can't bankrupt the, 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 the rainy day fund uh, because we need it. But isn't it true though that we're, we actually are going below our, our current policy, which is 12 percent? They were okay with us being at 12. No, we're, we're holding the line. That's why we're well, taking well, it away. Well, we're going down to 10.5. No. 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 We're still maintaining at 12, aren't we? Yes. Well, that will be our discussion in another month. When I put in the 365 or whatever number I ended up 315. with. 315. Whatever number we came up with after the school changed their number. Yeah. It was, um, that got us down to 12%. Right. So, as Nick said, in the final report from Standard & Poor, they specifically say in writing, and would you make a note to send everyone a copy of that? Because yep. it came in today. Uh, they make a note that they're project or there's um, forecasting our outlook is stable going forward providing we don't continue to draw down and when I spoke I spoke to her at length at the end of the phone call and she said specifically to me I need you to know one of the things I really liked hearing was that it's important to you to not have a moving target and to keep we, we don't want to see those numbers moving. Well the problem is we've been Reducing it every year, so they're right. probably looking for that to stop. Well, yes, I mean that's one of the is you can't keep changing the policy, or it's not really a policy. Yeah, that's right. So that's kind of what she was saying. So, and as far as the report goes, we may get those changes made to it. So if I don't send it out to you guys tomorrow, I didn't forget. But we found a couple, what I would call errors in the way she wrote stuff yeah. up. We've requested her to change it. Dick and I are getting together tomorrow. If she's going to change it. 
It's not going to change our rating. It's just some of the burgers that you. So do we still have a good rating? It's an A. A plus. A plus rating. They kept it the same as it is. A plus, uh, which is uh, high average, not average, not high, but better than it's average. Not a plus plus. It's not A plus plus, and it's not triple A, but it's A plus. Uh, and this graph, and I can tell you on the investor side, that's extremely important. Uh, nobody's going to buy water go bonds if your credit rating stinks. And especially, they're not going to buy them if they get burned. After they bought them at a good credit rating, you do something later, and now they have to write down a loss on their books because your credit sucks. That'll be the last time people start talking about buying a water go bonds. But it's important to keep that mindset of there's a whole investor side of it down the road. And the last thing on capital improvements, you've seen this graph before, I think, the use of a surplus in the early years was all for capital improvements. All the blue is capital improvements, and of course you see when everything went south and with the, uh, the economy, 2008, we started to draw down surplus from operational. And so capital improvements got bonded. So hopefully we'll start to turn this back around where we can start using our surplus someday to, you know, maybe on an annual basis, fund a few pieces of equipment, public works, or park to rack, or whatever. I'm oh, sorry, Chief. Whatever. <laughs> whatever. You're whatever. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're getting your rescue truck, right? Um, but, so, so how, are, how are these next? Yeah, Remind me how these next years will possibly be paid for. Them. Is that a, no idea? Okay, yeah. I'm just because I've I've gotten a couple of calls about this kind of falls boardwalk. Right. Um, like you're spending our tax money building a boardwalk and head of falls, and I said no, that is not. It's just on a it's on a wish list. It's on a wish list. Um, okay. Yeah. Anything going out beyond next year's line. 15, 16, that's just the wish list. I, I, and I assume that, yeah. And actually next uh, week, next council meeting, I want to present that boardwalk idea because the city would... Uh, Great. And then everyone's going to be talking on the streets about that, that the city's building a it's boardwalk. It's a wish list. <laughs> Can we not? No, we nobody not? believes that. Well, <laughs> we have a chance to apply to the Rotary Club for $150,000. So if I can raise the money from the Rotary Club, it have to be other donors, I'd like to try, but I can't do that without the council knowing about it. So my purpose next Tuesday is to say, here's a plan. I'd like to try and raise money. I'm not committing the city. Is it okay if I go out the truck? As long as it doesn't affect I'm just, the train station. And I know what you're saying. Right. Could we... There's nothing set in stone at this point, my friend. I know. That's on my wish list. Money you're raising. The only reason I'm asking is, you know, I feel like with development and things happening, that there's not an idea of what's going to happen down there, and maybe we could. Well, the, I don't know. It just seems a little like we're jumping ahead. Of, of building a boardwalk down there might seem a little like we're jumping the gun on something. Well, no, the not paying for it. Right, it's trying to get money from the Rotary. The Rotary is making 150 grand available for a community project that they can put their name on. Yeah, it's yeah. going to kind of be a crooks and mortar. can raise it, then it's Street Park. So, I'm just it. thinking there's there's a lot of, uh, I, I don't know, it, this is just my opinion, but there could be a lot of ways we could spend $150,000. It's not our money. But it's not our money from the Rotary. What are we going to ask the Rotary to give it to? It's not our money. Green there's Street a, Park? Yeah, I mean, Green Street Park, you know, Parks and Rec is looking to. Um, uh, well, then. They need yeah. to submit a proposal to Rotary just like the company. Well, yeah, right. They will be. And that's so you, you be, won't right? be getting an endorsement from the city council. You're just going to give them information. Say, hey, can we move I'm going to work can, on. We, can we ask the Rotary? Can we yeah. put this out as an idea to the Rotary? Right. Right. Thank you. Uh, right. So there's a group working right. to I just, I just, oh, yeah. I've already gotten three phone calls about that item, and I don't know oh, really? where they saw this item. Is it on a list? Online. Well, I've been Possibly. talking to a lot of people about the boardwalk and showing pictures, so that's where it's kind of happening. But Quarry Road is submitting no. a... No, they won't. They decided not to? Yeah. Okay. They 
Street Park. Somebody else's money. Yeah. It, may, it may never even happen. Anyone can submit the uh, proposals. Okay. Surprise. <laughs> Let's have another statue in the concourse. Blame me. Blame me. I want to send you. Uh, the other item on the agenda is outside agencies. As in the past, we only have two funding outside agency requests. One is uh, KD cap on the transportation. The other one is Canada Valley Mental Health. Um, so those are in the budget, and we can discuss those. They're under miscellaneous. Miscellaneous. Chuck, so what page was that? Page 43. Page 43. Second page under the after the miscellaneous tab. I've been here ten years, and those amounts are the same since I've been. What do they do? What do they pay well, for? Well, the um, amount to KB cap at sixty one hundred helps to support that um, van KB van service. What's the name? Explorer. Canabec Explorer. 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 Right. So it provides. Uh, bus service throughout the city. Um, we get a lot more than $6,100 worth, in my view. We do. We do. And we are looking at some funding so that we can have a second bus. The annual so that's the bus, though. That, I'm just trying, I'm not trying to delay for the point. Just, no. Yeah. Who is, What's that? The $6,100, that's for the bus service. That's for the bus service. Yeah. What, what is KBH? Do they actually provide some mental health services in an emergency situation? Oh, yeah. Yes. Year that, round. That's where schools also call for counselors for. That's covered by the 10,000. I don't know, if, but I just know that. School probably has an online KBH item on that. Is well, a are we doing that as a contract on my we, we have been doing it as an annual contract with Kennebec Valley Behavioral Health. It's for people that are in crisis situations and show up for help at the hospital, uh, end up being transferred to the mental health center. They get treatment, they get counseling. Um, not so much in the schools. We also help the police out if they have a crisis issue, like in a couple of different groups. The police oh, no, crisis and have um, the midnight team, it's called which is funded really through the state. And that goes back to that tragedy many years ago at Plus Sacrament, when the nuns, uh, the terrible thing happened there. And so the state provided After the state money. released everybody from Yeah, right. And so the state provided money for this midnight team, is what it's called. So this is not the same thing. Okay. So you're right, Nathan, it's, Daniel, it's different. So I, I don't understand, I guess, why we're paying them ten thousand dollars because what they're going to do if they go into a hospital, they're going to bill that patient anyway. For patient. This yeah. is for unprovided care, or yeah. uninsured care. It's for care that they can't bill for. Okay. No insurance coverage. No. I mean, it's okay. Yep. And this certainly, is, this is containing something that you don't want. You could be more. Good. Am I would you, this is a this is a con, like insurance for contagion. Yeah, yeah, it's an insurance. It's an insurance policy. Yeah. Since we're on page forty three, the Canada County tax is down to seven forty five this year. Is that because they adjusted their tax year? Is that how that works? Yeah, we had like a five year No, it's because of the end of the five year Right. We had a five year thing where they switched from fiscal to calendar year, I believe. Yeah, yeah. That it went from calendar year to fiscal, fiscal year, year, and so we were paying an extra seventy two thousand, seventy some thousand every year. We finished that up this last December, so now we just pay the regular rate. So I'm glad you brought that up, though, because we got an action alert that with the bill from the legislature to change the county jail funding situation, Kennebec County is apparently one of the counties that's going to su suffer a huge increase in county jail costs as a result of the old county jail system going away and a new system coming in. So we're going to have to watch that very closely. Okay. And I thought I was very conservative because if you'd see the Department of Quest, I put 727, which is basically what we had paid this in this year's budget for that piece, not the extra. And then I contacted them and they said, worst case scenario would be up, whatever percentage. 
that's before this bill was signed. So I bumped it up to 745 thinking that's going to be way higher. Because the, the county jail, the county jail went on <coughs> state dole for Correct. Years. And now the state, Paul Bay, our old buddy, wants to give it all back. Correct. Correct. And it's going to up the ante. So There's going to be winners and losers. That may not be as... as some, some counties are taking the extra borders. When you make money. We'll be so winners. Big old new, new jails helping to be paid for by the state. Yeah, so I'll send you tomorrow the information that came in today. It looks like a huge increase for Canada County. Have, have you seen the courthouse in I haven't been there. And it's pretty wild. Great, so a lot of them want to vote against the paper most of that. Right? <laughs> Water and Augusta. <laughs> Rome's not paying that much. I That's think. right. If anyone has it, you should look at look at who's paying the county fans. And what do we get for seven hundred and forty five thousand? Can anybody tell me that? <laughs> the new courthouse in Augusta. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And we get to send our prisoners to the jail. And we can go to probate and registry. Does that cost seven hundred and forty-five thousand dollars? I thought it was four million dollars to send in. That's right. Just send them. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Next week, council meeting. See you then. Thank you very much. Okay.